My name is Dr. Gareth Coates, and I'm here today at Kemble to talk about a really new exciting capability that we've developed. We are using hydrogen fuel cells to decarbonize aviation. Now, there's a lot of strong challenges with that, and the most abundant of which is how do you test fuel cells in an aviation context? Now, on that journey to certification, we can't just put that straight into an aircraft. We have to be sensible about testing those things on the ground. And what we have behind us is a really significant lab that allows us to do that. So follow me and we'll show you around the lab and show you some of its exciting capabilities. So what's so important about this lab and what makes it so special? Well, obviously testing fuel cell in an aviation context is quite a complex and difficult thing to do. And this lab allows us the freedom and the space with which to operate these fuel cells at extremely high powers and, and, and different conditions to make sure we're pushing the envelope of this technology as fast and as hard as we can, but in a safe context. Now, byproducts of fuel cells involves the creation of thermal energy, which we obviously need to get rid of, and also electrical energy, which will ultimately go into the motor. And this lab gives us the capability to produce over one megawatt of electrical energy and over one megawatt of thermal energy, which is a significant amount of power. This could be done in a safe and controlled context, and the building in which we see around us allows us to do that in a safe way. So the building takes care of high voltage safety issues and also gaseous hydrogen issues as well. We have an array of sensors that we can use to detect this and make sure that we stay within the bounds of what is acceptable for the fuel cell. Now we have two bays, we have bay one and bay two. And within bay one, we have a system called the open frame, which is one of our early generations of powertrain. And then in bay two, we have something called the air sample, which again is a bit more of a volume constrained version of what you're gonna see in bay one. So if we're going to bay one, we can talk to Daniela, who'll hopefully give us a bit of a rundown about what it is and what we're trying to do with it. Hi Daniela. Hi Gareth. Can you possibly talk us through the open frame please? Sure. The open frame is a test platform we use to test our multi-stack configuration uh, that will be the heart of our power plant uh, that will integrate into the final uh, aircraft. Here we have lots of sensors, lots of valves that will allow us to characterize the stack as much as possible using different parameters in terms of temperature, pressure, relative humidity. Here we also can uh, tune our control that is uh, developed by uh, our own team in our ECU that allows us to pull different levers in the system uh, uh, quite easily and tune the control based on how the system responds to the input. Here you can see all the subsystems. Uh, you have the full air distribution system and the coolant distribution system that are all need to make the stack work. However, it's quite big, it's quite heavy, and it cannot go into an aircraft. That's why we needed a more integrated volumetric constraint system that actually can go into an aircraft. And the solution to this integration challenge is possible to see next door. Thank you, Daniela, that was really helpful. If you follow me, we'll go next door and have a look at the A sample. So next door, you saw the open frame. Obviously that can't go in a plane, it's too big, um, it was too heavy. So what you've got here essentially is the boiled down version of that. So next door, we've used the lab to work out what the minimal viable product is, and we've condensed them down into the most volumetrically small and least weight package we can get. And this is what you have in front of you. This module is super exciting. It can do over 400 kilowatts gross in electrical power. Now, just to draw an equivalency of that, most electric vehicles need around 100 kilowatts to do the 0 to 60 that you see in the market today. So this thing can do four times that. And it's obviously very volumetrically very small and, and mass wise, it's obviously very, very light as well. We have lots of different subsystems on the open frame. You saw those spread out quite openly and quite wide. Um, we have an anode assembly, which takes care of the hydrogen inlet gas. We have a humidification system, which deals with the cathode system. So the humidifiers and the back pressure valves. We have the four individual stacks, which are electrically connected all together in series. And then finally, we have the high voltage output cables and the LV cables on this side. In summary, this is an absolutely fantastic achievement by the team. We're currently in the commissioning stage, but obviously this is really important to us in show how we show the steps towards certification, how we have a playground where we can develop things in this side of the lab. We can then constrain them and confirm that they are still functioning as we intend and how we move to the aircraft moving forward. So thank you for your time today and I hope you really enjoyed the tour and you're just as excited about this lab as we are.